Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about if silence makes the dismissive avoidant attachment style miss you. I just wanted to jump in here really quick and let you know exciting news, which is that we are launching round two of integrated attachment theory coaching training. This is training with me about everything related to attachment styles, reconditioning the subconscious mind, and also includes a full session all about how to build your business, how to produce funnels, how to really up level so that you can work from home, work with clients, have the freedom and flexibility you want to be of service to contribute after a whole bunch of training, really learning about these tools and tips from the inside out. I'm really excited to be sharing this. We won't be doing this again till literally probably October of next year, 2023. Um, so join now while you can. We're doing this because of popular demand from our last one. Our seats filled up so quickly, and I would love to be able to share this with you. So if you want to learn more and get on the list below, you can click the link in the description box and we begin this October 5th. We're going to talk about the different facets of this. On one hand, the answer is absolutely yes. And this is largely because dismissive avoidance are operating in their feelings minus their fears, but there's more to it than just that. So dismissive avoidance are basically in this place where their subconscious programming in relationship to attachment is they were programmed to feel like attachment was painful because they often felt emotionally neglected. There may have been certain needs they got met at a more superficial level. And that's generally why they try to stay in more superficial relationships because it's their comfort zone. But when it came to the emotional depth of a relationship to parents and caregivers where emotions were discussed, um, the child was attuned to, they were checked in with, hey, how was your day? I noticed you're off today. Did something happen at school? Talk to me about it. I mean. That's even when attachment develops later into childhood, really develops at a much younger age first, but of course we can get conditioned in different ways over time. Um, but as this is taking place, a, a child from a DA household or who becomes a DA grows up in a household where there is a total lack of emotional attunement and that's very painful. And so they keep trying to go back to like what they know. We all try to operate out of our subconscious comfort zone, which means if parents and caregivers were just operating with you in a place of harmony, safety, high level commitment, high level connection, um, intellectual connection, but no real depth of emotional connection. If that wasn't anchored in there, then they keep trying to go back to those types of relationships, go back to what they know. So when real vulnerability is required, which is a, just a natural unfolding when we start to really develop feelings for somebody and more deeply attach, they, they often try to sabotage it. It's scary. That's outside of my comfort zone. The subconscious mind keeps wanting to re-engage with what's familiar. So we have the DA operating in this state of their feelings minus their fears. And so when those fears come online too strongly, it's very terrifying. And that will often cause the DA to try to keep people at arm's length or pull away. Now, they often also associate their feelings as a sign of weakness or defectiveness, right? Shame. When a child grows up in a household where they're shamed for something, or when they grow up in a household where something's really not met and it's neglected, they experience that part of themselves as shameful, that part of themselves that was neglected. So, you know, they, they will really try to keep people away here. Now, what's interesting is that, so silence, what silence does in a relationship is it takes the fears away because when you're not there, there's nothing to fear. There's no vulnerability to fear. There's no deep connection to fear. There's no, you know, obliteration of the subconscious comfort zone to fear. So they can really tap into their feelings. However, dismissive avoidance can also be out of sight, out of mind individuals because they tend to really get their needs met from like what's in front of them. It's not the case with every DA ever, but it is a bit of a, a coping mechanism that they're good at um, getting into. And they also are good at like repressing their feelings for fairly long periods of time. So there needs to be like a healthy middle ground. You'll often see dismissive avoidance get into long distance relationships because it's their subconscious way of bypassing vulnerability a little bit. It's like, oh, if there's more distance, I don't have to feel like I'm so vulnerable to you. I can be vulnerable from a distance, which feels safe. Um, so when we're trying to engage in a relationship with a DA and maybe it's been on the rocks or it hasn't been working um, and you're taking, you know, maybe you're going no contact, things like that. There's sort of like this middle ground um, and I put a lot of videos on this channel about no contact. I've got a whole course about it as well, about no contact, breaking up, being on the rocks in a relationship. Um, and, um, it's called how to repair any relationship. And it, it really is within the constraints of like, 
what this person's available to give you and you sort of defining like your non-negotiables, your standards and really coming to terms with like what's a right fit, but also all the tools you need to, if you're really willing to participate in a relationship and think it's worth trying for, to really find a way to make that relationship work by understanding these key principles um, to get relationships off the rocks. <laughs> um, so you can check that out for free for seven days. It's called How to Repair Any Relationship. Um, but because, and the, I'll put a link below it, it also gives you access to all of our other courses for seven days and um, our live calls that I do with our students. So you can come in and ask me questions if you have them. Um, but essentially you'll see this dynamic of like, DAs tend to first respond to silence a lot. They respond to space a lot. Um, they wanna try to re-engage a lot of the time or they miss that kind of connection and comfort when they're not in that fear mode. Um, but they can become out of sight and out of mind or out of sight, out of mind where they sort of like move on. Um, and generally there's a bit of a time period at which that occurs. And it tends to be between like six weeks to three months. When something's on the rocks, it's not working and somebody pulls away they tend to be really good at repressing um, their emotions first around it because that's their way of initially coping. It's like their go-to coping mechanism. So they tend to sort of be able to keep their emotions at bay around situations. And then eventually they start being like, okay, well, I can feel some of these feelings and they're processing. They almost have like a delayed processing of their emotions. It's like, okay, this happened a while ago. It must be safe to feel now. And they'll sort of give themselves a little bit more permission to start feeling their feelings. And that's where they can experience a lot of pain and, and hurt, um, especially around silence. So silence on one hand can be beneficial, but I think the relationship we each have to silence, if a relationship isn't working, has to be truthful to ourselves. So if you're just trying to use silence as a technique to make somebody miss you, there's an element of manipulation in that. If you're using silence as a technique to give yourself space to figure out what you want in a relationship, if this is right for you, um, to give yourself actual boundaries so that you can do some healing if something's not working. And then you can be really clear if that person does try to reach back out to you or re-engage about what you would need from that person in order to really make the relationship work if you were thinking about it. Well, now you're in a position where you can go, okay, I know what I would need. I'm very clear about it. If I get these things, when a person tries to reconnect, I may be open to seeing how it goes for a period of time. And if I keep seeing momentum, I may keep my, my mind open and continue to invest. But, and this is with any attachment style, if you, um, you know, are just using silence to get somebody back and there's no growth in the relationship, then that becomes harmful for everybody. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. I probably should have put that as a disclaimer at the beginning, um, but I hope this makes a lot of sense. So that's it for this video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for checking out this channel, being here, hanging out. I really appreciate it. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate it as well. And um, I will see you in the next video tomorrow.